So let's talk a little about a little bit about your grid to charger solutions. Um, there's, you know, a lot of technology involved. Um, what does it take to go from the grid to an EV charger in, in kind of a short summary, if, if you will? Sure. Yeah, we, you know, we obviously, you know, think about a lot of parts of the electrification chain um, at ABB, and this is no exception. We think about the electrical utility grid. We think about the electrical gear that you have on site in the grid edge. Of course, we, we make some of the world's best chargers, as Cliff can easily talk about too, and, and, then, the, and then the vehicle. And so when, when you really get down to it, a lot of folks start with the vehicle and they kind of move backwards up that chain. And w we think about all sides of it. And it's no longer chicken and the egg. It's, it's how do we make this a linear process and safely move power um, and, and bring the features along that people want. And so a lot of folks don't know that there is more than just a charger. You can't plug a charger into a wall. It's not an iPhone when you're fast DC charging a vehicle, right? So you actually have to have very specific infrastructure, you know, designed and put in place um, in order to, to bring that much power through a site, whether it's a CPO, you know, charging highway charging site or a gas station or even your own house um, or, or even the much, much bigger complex sites, right? So there's there's a lot to think about and and if you go back a step further you know there's a piece of the pie that is you know what the utility is doing at the distribution side of course um, so we're thinking through that whole chain um, and the technology involved is is quite interesting and complex we can dive deeper into it today i'm sure um, i don't know cliff what what's your take on uh, on that from the charger side Yes, no, absolutely. And I think it's the whole whole ecosystem. And I think this is what we're learning now uh, with how networks are perceiving the charger integration. So one of the pain points uh, which we identified together with the with the colleagues like, like Matthew and others is how do we integrate a charger which started out as a level two charger with a seven seven to 11 kilowatts or 22 kilowatts with a high power charger now 400 and more kilowatts. Uh, this has totally different uh, grid constraints. So you'd have to uh, account for the whole um, en um, energy chain going from the grid into the charger and also including load management and load balancing and, and all of that. So it's now much more a system approach than just uh, a charger approach as um, what Matt mentioned. You don't just plug it in. There needs to be a whole system set up uh, to have a successful site. I understand you have a sort of simulation or probably a better description, a visualization tool about all these different systems and how they can interconnect. Um, you know, how does it work? Why'd you develop it? And yeah, you know, can we see it? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and I'll show it to you and everybody here if we, Get it, get all the uh, everything work out. But we built a simulator because um, <laughs> we saw we saw a really interesting problem, and that was there was a lot of you know even even though it uses very similar electrification materials, there's there's a lot of misunderstanding around how do you electrify a site to get it ready for chargers that can power vehicles, right? And so we were like thinking, all right, well we can show everybody demos and we can show them you know examples of setups, but there's there's thousands of possibilities for how you could electrify a site. So we wanted to educate all of our stakeholders. And, and again, this is not an iPhone, right? We're not buying an iPhone and a charger and just plugging it in, right? There's a whole industry that's required for installing and, and getting, you know, uh, electricity at your site. We wanted to make that faster. And the way that we can do that faster is to get people more familiar and the way we do that is education. So we built this tool uh, and we, we showed it off at a few trade shows uh, pretty early on and asked for a lot of feedback. We, we still would love feedback. If anybody has any, we'd love to hear it. Um, it got real popular. And then we decided to put it online, make it free and just have anybody be able to get on there. And it's, it's, um, it's sort of like what to expect when expecting EV charging, right? Like it's a, it's, it's a way to visualize what's going to be going on at your location, depending on what kind of charger you choose. So um, if you want, um, I can do a quick demo of it right now. 
Absolutely. So just let me know when it's coming through this, uh, the podcast recording here. It's in. Okay, great. So, so this is it. Very simple. We, we have a little bit of legal disclaimer at the beginning because this is not a design. It's not an engineered design. Everybody just, everybody be okay with it's a visualizer, a simulator, but you still need an engineer to properly, you know, design something for your site. Um, you know, it, we start with what kind of chargers you have, right? And we can think about all of them or things for home or public, light duty fleets or even medium and heavy duty bus fleets. Um, basically, this is all about power level. So we show our chargers. It, it's, it's going to be kind of the same for anybody's, um, but it's all about power level. So the first thing I'm, I'm going to do is I'm going to select this 180 kilowatt charger. Um, it's kind of what you might see at, a, say, a Nebi site right now. Um, and so I'm going to select 10 of these with this little slider. Um, I, I like to refer to this as sort of middle of the road these days. So there's, there's things that are slower, there's things that are faster. So we're, we're just going to go with the 180 for right now. Um, and here you go. Immediately you see what's a, going to be a very common setup in between the grid and the charger. Well, what you're looking at in the middle is a giant switchboard. <laughs> I say giant because it's, you can see the dimensions here. It's 96 inches tall, uh, 45 inches deep. And, you know, 85 inches wide. Um, it is, you know, it's something that you're going to have to have on your site. And a lot of people don't know this. So we like to show them how big these are. Right. Um, and in this case, there's a there's a cabinet, there's a utility cabinet. Depending on what part of the country you're in, you're going to have to have another cabinet on site. And that's in addition to your chargers, um, you know, sort of. And this will all this is all outdoor rated and everything else. Well, here's the fun part. You can take the slider and you can you can real time move your number of chargers up to, let's say, 30. And so now we know that that's going to be three switchboards and some probably some medium voltage cabinets, um, you know, out there. The real interesting thing here is besides the amazing products, uh, <laughs> the real interesting thing is over here on the left. And that's the utility service estimate. And so if you have 30, 180 chargers, let's say you're a, uh, I don't know, you're an aspiring Bucky's or you're a, a big truck stop off of a highway in the middle of the country or something. Um, or, 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 you know, big, big stopping area, right? You know, that's 5.7 megawatts at code level, right? So if, if, if everybody plugged in at a very low state of charge at the exact same time, code says you're going to need this much power coming through your system, 6,900 amp service, right? That's a lot. So um, basically what we all kind of know is the utility is going to look at this and say, we understand charging curves also, right? You're never going to need... 5.7 for 30 of those chargers. And they'd probably be right. You're probably never going to have 30 low, you know, <laughs> 30 cars come in with a 5% state of charge and plug in at the exact same time. So they will, they will do a, an adjusted utility service estimate. Like, and, you know, a lot of times let's, let, we, we just estimate about 75% that the utility might say they're going to give you. So we, we click that in here, right? So now we can see, all right, that's 4.3 megawatts. And when you choose that, there's actually a couple of things that change here in the middle. But the real magic is this, is this next option. It's EV load management solution. And we make one. A lot of people make them. We happen to think if you start with the, with the, with the breakers in the middle that you get a much better you know, future-proof design. Well, you can see immediately that that's a much lower number, you know, 2.9 versus 5.7. Here's the magic. You can call your utility today and say, what's the difference in timing and price between these two amounts? And you can make a financial business decision now. And I probably saved you a week in the calculation. And then I also showed you what, what to expect in your parking lot. And so it's, it's fascinating, you know, what, what you can, what you can do with this tool. And, and I'll show you one more thing that I just love, love to do. So I'm going to knock these down a few and I'm going to add a few of these sort of, uh, we'll call them commercial AC chargers. Let's just say you're a company that has a giant overnight fleet or sorry, not overnight giant fleet that charges overnight. Um, you know, you can, you can now see with 180 of these um, Terra AC, you know, or any, any sort of AC level two charger, you know, you're going to have a lot of these um, power panels out here and you can, you can just, you can still do it all in real time. You can figure out, you know, like, all right, if I call the utility and they say, you know, we can't give you that much power, you ask them how much power can you give me? And then, and then you roll it down and you can make a decision 
and say, all right, in our in our time frame as a business, we can we can execute on this number of chargers with the utility now. And so we we find this to be super valuable. Our customers tell us it's valuable. Um, it's 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 doing a lot of calculations. It's surprising how much math is involved, <laughs> how much you know, like how many how many of our engineers have been involved with this. It's 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 really amazing. Um, but it helps people save time, gives them a sense of what's going on, shows them what's what they can expect, and and gives them a way to, to ask us questions. You know, they can they can immediately find us. Um, so. Anyway, so I'll just I'll leave it right here, Tom. And I don't know if there's anything you want to see on this before I stop sharing it with everyone. But you tell me. Well, the load management is of particular interest to me. I mentioned earlier, we have a lot of charging stations here at Monroe and Associates. And I do worry about the day where every employee shows up with their 5% state of charge. And yeah, then we have a big problem here. Um, so yeah, I'm curious how this load, load management scales. Um, will it work for an application as, as small as ours? And um, you know, what sort of advantage would I see from that if, if it did work? Yeah, I mean, it, and it all depends on what you put in. I mean, you, you can load manage a, a very complex system I and mean, you could have a ton of fast chargers, you could have a ton of the AC slow chargers. Like it's still the system that we've developed that starts in the, in the breakers that it can, it can certainly scale up to whatever. And, and that's a really interesting point. Um, I'm just going to stop sharing here for a second. Um, get back to seeing you on camera. Um, it's a really interesting point because you're, you're a great example. When you install chargers, you have, the first round, right? Your first decade of chargers is going to be this many chargers. And then in five years, you may add more or you may replace some, right? One of the things we found is this, this equipment that goes in the middle where some of these load management features exist and the building energy management features exist and the control exists and all this, like that equipment is going to be in the ground for 30 years. And if anybody has paid attention to chargers, like you know, you take care of them really well, which you should with the service level agreement. Let's all be honest. If you take care of them for a as well as you can, they're going to last you ten years, maybe a little more. So ultimately, you're going to have some change with your chargers. So you're either going to add exactly the same one again, which is probably not going to be the same in ten years, right? You're going to add more. You're going to replace some and add more. You're going to have different brands. Who knows, right? So like ultimately what you want is an electrical system that doesn't care how many or which type you have. And that's the kind of stuff that we think about all the time is like, how do we make sure that that really is future proof uh, so we can really make the customers happy because nobody wants to pay for another switchboard in 10 years just because you added five chargers. All right. Some very good answers and a very impressive tool, the simulator, that is. Uh, great for visualizing all the complex scenarios and maybe a little bit of, uh, you know, experimentation uh, on the part of the customer where they can educate themselves about what they're about to get themselves into. Yeah, so, well, and we can share the link. I mean, if anybody cares, it's abbevg2c.com. So EV Grid to Charger, like abbevg2c.com.